This framework is, uh, you can apply this to a country, you can apply it to a company, you can apply it to uh, almost anything that you want to do around digital transformation. So here, we start off by looking at um, the ICT industry performance. We look at uh, where we are uh, as a country. We look at the multiplier effect of ICT uh, on people and on companies and on businesses and on citizens. We look at the enabling environment, what is required to be changed in the country to make things go forward. We look at things like uh, digital in, uh, infrastructure, innovation capital around VCs and entrepreneurs, funding, for example, and also talent. At the end, I will show you uh, an outline of what we're doing moving forward. So this is a snapshot of where we are. I'll stand out of the way a bit. Um, so from a perspective of Malaysia's digital economy, we look at it from a perspective of we need to build a vibrant digital industry. We're looking at trying to attract the best technology companies to come and set up in Malaysia. Looking at promoting a vibrant ICT startup environment in Malaysia and accelerating ICT companies to go regional and global. That, that is the industry itself that we're trying to create. And while we do this, we want to look at the transformation adoption, transformative adoption of ICT by everybody. Transformative adoption of ICT by the government of Malaysia, by technology innovation companies involved in businesses, and by citizens. And I, I think that was the most important challenge that we had uh, about bringing ICT transformation down to the people level. Sometimes you can do it at the country level or at company levels, but for the man on the street or the woman on the street to actually feel how ICT impacts their life, that, that, that was quite a challenge. Underlying all of this is around looking at the ecosystem, the talent creation ecosystem, innovation capital, the digital infrastructure and R&D uh, environments. Taking this to one level of uh, further detail, you'll see that from the industry side, we look at uh, the uh, ICT infrastructure, uh, ICT services. The one on the left, I'm not sure if this works, the one on the left, uh, the ICT development infrastructure, this is what uh, I am personally, me and my group are in charge of. I'm in charge of ICT services for Malaysia as a country. Uh, we, we look at uh, the e-commerce environment, we look at manufacturing environment, we look at ICT services, e-commerce, manufacturing, trade, and content and media. And, and those are the things that are driving the ICT industry in Malaysia right now. While we look at that as a starting point to say where are we in those environments, we also look at digital transformation. And the digital transformation is how will the government change, both the federal and the state government? How will business communities change? The communities identified are the SME communities. We have 743,000 SMEs in Malaysia, the multinationals, the large local companies, and entrepreneurs as well. We also look at the citizen community, the people that we want to touch, who do we want to touch, and how do we want to touch them? So we look at the bottom 40 income earners, we look at the youth, we look at the middle 40 income earners in the country, the elderly, the single mothers, and people with special needs. Um, underlying all of that, as I said, the digital infrastructure, both the hard and soft infrastructure, we look at critical enablers around startup and entrepreneurship, risk capital, R&D, intellectual property, and uh, from a talent perspective, we look at everything from an entry level uh, at school, K-12, tertiary, latent talent, uh, business leaders, and technical professionals. So that, that's the landscape that we're looking at. So today, for example, the digital economy from an economic impact contributes 16.38% of national GDP. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, the largest uh, GDP contributor is oil and gas. Uh, oil and gas is 24.5% of national GDP. Uh, today, uh, ICT contribution, uh, companies that use ICT is 16.38%. Uh, we have a vision by 2020, we call this Vision 2020, to, to get to 18.2% of national GDP. So we define where we are, we measure where we are, we define where we want to get to, and then we outline the plan of how to get there. The digital economic growth in Malaysia, the average growth uh, in 2013 was 7.7%. We need to drive that up to 10.2% of national ICT. Um, 
And from a non-manufacturing perspective, um, we need to drive it up to about 80% of uh, the economic contribution. But we also looked at a bunch of uh, secondary indicators. It's not only good enough to look at the quantifiable economic indicators, but we look at uh, uh, secondary indicators like the World Economic Forum, Global IT Ranking, where Malaysia is ranked 30. We want to drive that up to number 20 in the world in the top 20. We looked at the IMD World Competitiveness Yearbook Rankings. Uh, Malaysia is number 12 right now. And importantly, we looked at the Digital Malaysia Behavioral Change Index. Now this was an index that we created together with IDC. Uh, it was basically, um, it's not only measuring quantifiable economic numbers, but also understanding will people change? You ask them to change. Uh, I, I think the gentleman from PLDT spoke this morning about three generations of children that he's got. And each one of them goes through differing uh, issues when they try to change and adapt to new, te new technology. So the generation we're in, are they ready to make that change to embrace a whole digital uh, national move? So we looked at the behavioral index of where people are, and we tried to measure this, and then we define where we want to take people moving forward. The whole goal of this is to increase wealth in the, company, in the country under digital Malaysia, enhance the productivity of the SMEs and improve the standard of living. So the end goal, it has to touch people's lives and it has to make things better. And what we did was we benched ourselves against a number of uh, countries that we picked around the world, uh, Germany, Canada, Singapore, Taiwan, Hong Kong, US and Korea. So every quantifiable index that we put in, we put in and measured against this to see where we stand against the global world. Um, I'm going to have a quick look at economics now to see from a numbers perspective uh, where this stands. The ICT industry, as I said, in 2013 contributed 16.38 of national GDP, $161 billion. Um, the economics was 34.6% margins, um, $221 billion of exports. The number of people... Now, the easiest way to look at this is... If Malaysia as a whole, or Philippines, if Malaysia as a whole was seen as one company, what would that company look like? In this case, the company has revenues, annual revenues of $161 billion. The company is seeing net profits of 34.6% margins. The company is exporting more than it's importing. In fact, here, it's exporting $45 billion more than what it's importing. Now that's important, you need to export more than importing because you need to grow the company. The company has got 780,000 people. Now this company, this hypothetical company is called Digital Malaysia. It is the country as a whole. And in terms of employee compensation, $40.3 billion against the $161 billion of uh, compensation. This takes it to one level detail further. You've got a country, you've got Digital Malaysia, what are the products we sell? So if you look at the ICT environment, we look at ICT manufacturing, ICT trade, ICT services, content and media, there's import duties and other industries. Total ICT environment is $118 billion. And on top of that, we add on e-commerce, which is $44 billion. This was all 2013 numbers. So the digital economy of Malaysia that contributes the 16.3% of GDP, or the $162 billion of uh, environment, is broken into those areas. So trying to understand what we sell in a company, this would be what are the products we sell to, to go out. When we take this to another level of detail, we see that in terms of the products that we sell, ICT manufacturing is 33.5% of uh, the gross value add to the, to the country. ICT services is 43%. The WEF Global Competitiveness Index indicates that we're 30th out of 148. That's for the digital infrastructure. We look at innovation capital, we look at talent, and for each one of them we try to understand where do we stand relative to global positionings. Same thing, for each one of these areas, we deep dive into individual components and then we measure each one of them to say where do we stand on these tiny components. So we identified 27 high yield indicators from an economic perspective that we needed to look at uh, from the environment. Things like access, uh, 
Can you see that from the back? Or is that tight? Okay, uh, things like access readiness. Think that is number one up top. That's the mobile environment. Things like the broadband infrastructure, things like broadband prices. We look at access quality, uh, connection speeds in the country. We look at basic adoption, network adoption, advanced adoption of technology. How is it being accepted by the country? And then we look at how do people use technology from an elementary use to a productive use to an innovative use. And so for these 27 high yield indicators, uh, we measured where we were and then subsequently we mapped them all out onto a uh, traffic light indicator against other countries to say for all these areas, what are the areas that Malaysia are doing well at? What are the areas that we need to focus a bit more on in terms of concentration? So here we took, went away and said, for example, number 50, uh, the fixed broadband average speed connection is at number 52 in the world. So we need to focus on fixed broadband speeds as a key area of improvement. Last Friday, we had our budget for the country. There was um, a, a lot of incentives put in place for broadband. There was a lot of money put aside for broadband increase uh, across the country. But that was as a direct result of these studies because these studies say if you need to transform the country, there are things that you need to focus on. Other things that we looked at uh, that we needed to focus on was boosting the fixed and mobile internet subscription in Malaysia, working on increasing internet adoption throughout Malaysia, Okay, so that was the environment. Then the digital economic situation, uh, money, VCs, uh, startup companies, funding, uh, first tier, second tier, angel investors, all that is so important to a country to make sure that there's enough in the country. And so again, we went off and measured ourselves against where we stand and where global analysts look at, look at us as to where we stand. And also talent. Talent in Malaysia, uh, there is a shortage of talent. Uh, we've got more work than we can, uh, than we can handle in Malaysia. Our, our unemployment rate is uh, about uh, 3%, which means we're almost at full employment. But in terms of work coming into the country, companies coming in, setting up, there's a lot of companies coming in. So uh, in, terms, in terms of availability for work, uh, great prospects to work there. So okay, all of this, all of this looks at where we were. Now we need to look at where we want to go to. Yeah? And so looking ahead from a perspective of Malaysia, what this shows at the bottom there is ICT spending. The average ICT spending, uh, the uh, average compounded annual year growth in Malaysia was at 7.5%. So if we take on average what we've been doing since um, over the last, since 2010 to 2018, the average growth runs at about 7.5%. What we said was we need to get that up to more than 10%. Actually, here it's 9.1%. So if we can get the average up, then we can start to achieve some of the numbers that we want to do. And one of the things that's important is what you'll see, I think um, IDC spoke about this morning. There's this thing called the second platform and the third platform. And, and second platform talks about uh, products, services that are based on client-server computing, First platform talks about mainframe technologies, terminals. Second platform talks about client server computing. Third platform talks about social, internet, cloud, mobility, um, uh, and a couple of others. You know, so the, the, I'll, I'll show you what, what it is in a minute. But basically what we identify, there's traditional technology, and if we just use traditional technology, we will end up in 2020 um, at a CAGR of only 5%. There is new technology uh, in Malaysia, uh, all the new stuff coming through, IoT, big data, cloud and all that. We need to adapt all that and that will contribute 45% of overall ICT spend by 2020. So, so that is important. So as a country, as a government, we need to start looking at how we're going to embrace and bring in IoT, big data, cloud and various other things. Richard, how are we doing on time? A bit close, okay. Um, and, and, and I'm winding up. So, you know, here, what you see is this is a country transformation, country digital transformation, which, inclu which includes the macro social economic trends. We look at politics, economy, social, technology, legal environment. And the goal is how do we use technology to transform 
the country, the national digital economic environment, uh, into what we want to get it to. The embracing of third platform technologies, cloud mobility, social, big data. We identified um, seven areas that we need to focus on as a country. Uh, robotics, natural interfaces, 3D printing, internet of things, cognitive systems, and next generation security. And when we looked at that, we said if, the, if that's the third platform technologies, and these are the things that we need to focus on, what are the trends that are happening in the country right now? Uh, government spending on ICT. Where are they spending money? Where should they be spending money? What are the focus areas that they should be spending on? We looked at core business versus non-core business. Should people be doing stuff themselves or should they be outsourcing? Should they be running cloud themselves or should they be using public clouds? We looked at ICT efficiency and scalability. And, and we looked at a whole range of different things. But down at the bottom, the seven trends also include things like B2B to C commerce. Uh, this is e-commerce. We looked at data as a service. Very, very important. Data as a service. You want to transform data as a service. Data centers. Uh, not only data centers, but data as a country. Last year, we had to sit with the prime minister and, uh, and a whole bunch of ministers to force them to declare that they're going to hire a chief data scientist for the country reporting to the prime minister. We had to reclassify data into levels of data, into open data, secure data, and various other things. And we needed to make data available uh, to the marketplace. We look at things like uh, wearables, uh, ICT wearables. So the whole goal of this is to look at how we want to transform the country, look at platform, platform technology trends, look at the things that we want to focus on. How does that impact the digital economy today? And what are the things that we need to do different? And how all of this, by doing things different, will start to affect the ICT GDP of the country, our international competitive ranking, productivity, and our standard of living. Yeah, so that, that was kind of like where we wanted to get to. I'm going to skip through a few slides. You don't really need to do this, but you know, when we say government will fund 15 billion of ICT plans, I go back one slide. One of the things here was uh, impact to the national digital economy was government funding of ICT plans. So when we look at government spending of ICT plans, we looked at how they're going to spend the money, what are the key implications to Malaysia, and how we can take advantage of new technologies coming through. So for each one of those uh, seven areas, we went out and mapped all of this um, in terms of moving ahead into core versus non-core. We looked at things like data centers. You know, data centers on the left-hand side, the traditional data centers as we know them, um, things are changing, new technologies are coming out. We're moving towards virtualized data centers. We're moving towards software-defined data centers. You know, all, all of these things are transforming um, how the government, companies, businesses in the country uh, will use things. Um, we looked at uh, IoT. In this case, for example, things like uh, software quality testing uh, was, was a big focus. Uh, that we are spending a lot of money on. Uh, we look at uh, wearables. Uh, wearables is another big area. Uh, embedded systems, wearables. Uh, there's a lot of uh, focus being uh, put in Malaysia right now, incentives and, and things to drive this forward. We looked at e-commerce, massively exciting uh, in terms of what needs to be done. We looked at um, IoT and big data. And IoT and big data are, are, are core things for us right now in, in the country. So in a nutshell, summary, and I'm finishing uh, uh, off right now, what we're looking at is there are six areas that we have focused on, robotics, natural interfaces, 3D printing, and so on. This is part of our five-year plan moving forward. Malaysia, had, Malaysia, like any company, like any country, we operate on budgets. We are now on, in our, just kicking off our 11th Malaysian plan, which is a budget for the country that goes from 2016 to 2020. And in that, there's a whole focus on these six new areas. There's a whole focus on the adoption of three, three, uh, the third platform and how that impacts what the government, companies, and citizens are doing today with the ultimate goal of how does all this help increase GDP contribution uh, for the country uh, in those five areas. As a result, there's one document that's come out, which is our master plan, uh, our ICT master plan for the country, uh, moving forward for the next five years. And that defines from an implementation perspective, 
how we're going to move the country forward uh, in terms of what we need to do to affect government, businesses and citizens. Um, in summary of everything that I spoke about, uh, Digital Malaysia is about the national digital, digital economy in Malaysia. The goal is to get to, it was 18.2% of national GDP uh, until about a month ago, and then the government came back to us and said, we think we want to stretch you a bit more, so we're going to increase that target to 19% of national GDP by 2020. It's broken into where it's coming from, from ICT manufacturing and ICT trade, services, content, and e-commerce. So in the middle are the quantifiable numbers. The soft targets are about increasing ICT environments, productivity, and standard of living. The end goal is to touch government, businesses, and citizens. And this whole thing is looking at uh, socio-economic trends and emerging technology trends. So, so that was kind of like the digital transformation exercise uh, that we've gone through uh, and we continue to go through uh, in Malaysia. So when, when you hear about the term digital Malaysia, this is the, the last slide. When we talk about digital Malaysia, this is uh, what, what we've been doing uh, for quite a while now. So um, very confusing. I know that it was very big and, and all that stuff, but lots of data. But I hope that gave you a flavor. And uh, now with ASEAN Economic Community coming through, you know, we're, we're very happy to actually step out there and help work with governments or companies, if, if that makes sense, um, together with partners like IDC, who's you know, been very supportive and worked very closely with us. Okay? Thank you very much.